Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome viewers to the NPTEL lecture series on the calculus of variations. This is the 17th lecture of the series. In the last lecture that is in 16th lecture, we allowed uh, discontinuities to occur in the derivative of uh, extremals, so that we can apply these results to uh, problems appearing in uh, optics, where we considered reflection uh, from a given function y equal to phi x, uh, the functional uh, the uh, extremal got reflected at a point c, uh, this extremal joins two points a and b which are given and c is a point moving on the function y equal to phi x and the extremal is getting reflected at c. So, it uh, starts from a and it gets reflected from c and joins the point uh, boundary point B. So, here we are uh, supposed to get that point C, so that the uh, functional I gets optimized. So, here uh, also we considered uh, the problem of refraction. So, here in the first case we considered this picture here. So, this is the point A. Uh, and the point B, these are uh, given points here and C is a point which is moving on the curve y equal to phi x. And so, this extremal which joins the, these two given points A and B gets reflected at C. And so, uh, here although y the extremal y is continuous, but its derivative is discontinuous at C. And so, here in the first case reflection case both a and b are on the same side of the uh, curve y equal to phi x and so we use the condition here uh, this delta i which is sum of these uh, variations delta i1 plus delta i2 we break the uh, integral x1 to x2 at x3 which is the point c x3 y3 and so we get this delta i evaluated at two, the point x 3 minus that is the left limit and x 3 plus those things uh, two values are then equated and that is the condition 16.3 which had, we had got in the last lecture. And then we considered this example 16.4 where this f x y is non zero on the given function of y uh, phi y equal to phi x. And so, we got the condition here. Uh, that this 1 plus phi prime y prime over square root 1 plus y prime square at x equal to x 3 minus that means the left limit and same thing at the point x 3 the right limit. And so, here uh, if we denote these uh, the tangent at uh, ten tangent to the curve y equal to phi x at c makes the angle alpha and tangents at the extremals at the point c because those at point at the point c we will have two tangents uh, that is why the derivative is discontinuous at c. So, denoting those uh, left uh, tangent and right tangent uh, as tan beta 1 uh, and tan beta 2. So, that uh, the angles made by those tangents at the uh, on the x axis as beta 1 and beta 2. So, we uh, denote them like this tan alpha is phi prime at x 3 phi is assumed to be con uh, smooth. So, that derivative at x 3 exists and uh, tan beta 1 is y prime at x 3 minus and tan beta 2 is y prime at x 3 plus. So, we got this condition here since these two angles are here beta 1 is like this and beta 2 uh, is like this. So, we get here minus sign in this sec beta 1 here and then uh, multiplying by cos beta 1 on the left side and cos beta 2 on the right hand side, uh, we get here uh, this minus cos of alpha minus beta 1 equal to cos of alpha minus beta 2. So, this is pi minus alpha minus beta 1 equal to alpha minus beta 2. 
So, these are the angles um, at the point here and so the incident angle because uh, alpha minus beta 2 is this angle which is made uh, to the tangent by the uh, tangent on the curve by the tangent on the extremal. Similarly, you have alpha minus beta 2 gives us this angle. So, pi minus alpha minus beta 1 will be the other angle which is the incident angle. So, we get here uh, the famous law of reflection uh, that is the angle at the incident is same thing as angle of angle of the incident uh, is equal to angle of the reflection. Now, in the case uh, we have refraction, so then the figure is explained here. Uh, in the case of re refraction, uh, the point A is on one side and the point B is on the other side of the function y equal to phi x. And so, here uh, we have uh, different mediums, the light ray is travelling from one medium to another and obviously then the function, uh, the integrand uh, will be uh, discontinuous at uh, C. So, we uh, take two different functions uh, f 1 and f 2 there. So, as integrand and although y uh, may also have discontinuities of its derivative at C and f also has discontinuities at uh, the point C. So, we break this integral again in two parts x 1 to x 3 and x 3 to x 2. Here on first we have f 1 and on the second we have f 2 and then uh, proceeding in the same manner we get here uh, delta i y finally, uh, we get that uh, delta i y that should be equated to 0, the first variation must be 0 and therefore, it leads to the condition that f plus phi prime minus y prime f y prime evaluated at x 3 minus that is the left limit is equal to the same uh, value of the same thing at x 3 plus. So, that is what was obtained in the last lecture as 16.3 and so here if i y is taken as x 1 to x 2 f x y square root of 1 plus y prime square d x, then we will have two different uh, functions f 1 and f 2 there. And so, we get here in the case refraction, we get two different functions uh, f 1 and f 2 there and so we get this condition here. And uh, so, in this example we have uh, f as f 1 uh, on the left side of the curve and f 2 on the right side of the curve y equal to phi x. So, we get this condition here and denoting those angles as we had denoted earlier. So, we get here that cosine of now actually beta 1 and beta 2 both are on the same side in the refraction case. Here this tangent to this will come here like this that is beta 1 and like this it will come somewhere here beta 2. So, they are on the same side here and alpha is like this and so we get both the signs will be same here and we get in this case cos of alpha minus beta 1 over cos of alpha minus beta 2 and uh, if uh, these uh, functions f 1 f 2 are 1 over v 1 and 1 over v 2 respectively where these v 1 and v 2 are the velocities of the light ray in those two different mediums and then uh, we get this thing. And since uh, for in the law of refraction the angles are measured from the vertical line like this. So, uh, angles are measured we are measuring angle uh, at the tangent whereas, if we need to measure those angles from the vertical one and therefore, we take pi by 2 minus of these, these angles. So, we get sin of pi by 2 minus alpha minus beta 1 uh, of upon sin of uh, pi by 2 minus alpha minus beta 2 equal to v 1 upon v 2. And so, what it says that the uh, signs of the angles the ratio of the signs of the angles of uh, uh, at the point of uh, refraction, uh, we get the ratios of those uh, this uh, ratio of the signs of those angles must be equal to the ratio of the velocities of uh, the particle in the, the different mediums. 
and so this is what is known as famous law of Snell's law of refraction that is what is obtained uh, in this analysis. Now, here not only uh, the discontinuities in the derivative of an extremal can occur only in uh, reflection or refraction, there can be instances where these may occur in other instances also like if you consider this example. So, let us call it 17.1 now. Uh, so, this is i y equal to integral 0 to 1 y prime square 2 minus y prime whole square d x. And here this y 0 equal to 0 and y 1 equal to 1. So, here situation is uh, obviously uh, i y is greater than equal to 0 and uh, there is no uh, there is no finite maximum maximum there is no finite maximum because y prime can take uh, as large value as possible and so uh, only uh, finite minimum is possible. So, here extremal value is actually minimal value and uh, that is i y equal to 0 that is i y equal to 0 and which uh, occurs if y prime equal to 0 or y prime equal to 2. So, that is uh, so that is on y equal to uh, c 1 or on y equal to uh, 2 x plus c 2. And so, here what we have is the following this is x y axis and here this point a is 0 0 and b is 1 1 and so here and let us say this is half. So, here of course, y equal to x is uh, the line here joining here which is a straight line here because this functional the functional ca here the extremals are straight lines. Okay. So, uh, we have a line joining uh, these two points that is y equal to x, but on that y prime is not 0 nor y prime equal to 2. So, uh, this uh, i y will not be 0 for that. Uh, so, here what should happen that we should allow only y equal to some constant that is horizontal line and then uh, y prime equal to 2. Uh, so, that we have this line like this and so we can go like this or we can move like this and then go up like this or we can go to any level and move like this. So, like this we can move or we can go like this or we can go like this, but these extremals will have then uh, corners appearing here, here and all these points corners will appear and so uh, y prime will be discontinuous. So, the, the, this is an instance, this is an example where this functional attains minimum value only on the uh, extremals which are having discontinuities in the derivatives that is uh, they have corners in the uh, domain. So, uh, I mean here the such functionals can occur in practice that where the extremals uh, will they will be continuous, but their derivatives will be discontinuous. So, they will have corners at a certain number of points. So, like this we have that naturally the these kind of uh, functionals occur in uh, practical problems. Now, we will uh, move on to the cases where we should have certain conditions derived. So, that it is ensured that if those conditions are satisfied then the 
extremals where we have uh, the value of uh, first variation equal to 0. So, on that extremal uh, the it is a candidate for optimizing the functional, but whether it minimizes or maximizes uh, that is, is to be checked like we check it in case of functions the derivatives higher order derivatives and check whether the higher order double derivative is positive then we have minimum if double derivative is negative then second derivative is negative then we have maximum. So, like that we will recall that. So, we will uh, actually now consider sufficient conditions uh, for an extremum. So, here in the case of function a function f from x 1 to x 2 into r and uh, sufficiently smooth Uh, then we see that at any point interior point for an interior point x in x 1 to x 2 we uh, express f of x plus h by Taylor series as f of x plus f prime at x x minus h plus f double prime at x on factorial 2 x minus h square and so on. So, here we see that if uh, it, uh, it has maximum let us say the case when uh, this x 1 is here x 2 is here and x is here. So, suppose that the function has minimum. So, it should go like this and therefore, for minimum. So, uh, here f x can be expressed as uh, this Taylor series uh, if it is assumed to be sufficiently smooth then uh, equal to f x plus f prime x x minus h f double prime x upon factorial 2 x minus h square and so on. And then uh, we see that uh, at this point x 2 at x 2 f of x must be less than uh, must be greater than equal to f at x 2 uh, in certain in x 2 minus epsilon to x 2 plus epsilon epsilon is sufficiently small small enough. And so, and so we see that that f of x plus h minus f of x equal to actually f prime at x to x minus h plus f double prime x upon factorial 2 uh, x minus h square and so on. Now, if, if f prime x is not 0 then f of x plus h minus then the sign of this is same thing as sign of this term. So, uh, if this uh, and say f prime at x is positive then the sign of this is same thing as sign of x minus h. If f prime at x is negative then the sign of f of x plus h minus f of x equal to sin of minus sin of x minus h. Now, if you take x uh, to be in the left and the next time we take x on the right of h then we see that uh, this sign changes and therefore, this uh, in this case. So, taking x uh, on the left and uh, next time on the right of x equal to h at right of x 0 equal to x h we see that 
the sign is changed hence f cannot have local minimum in this case. So, therefore, hence a prime x must be 0 necessarily. So, this is a necessary condition So, likewise in our case uh, in the functional case we saw that the first variation. So, here the derivative like first derivative uh, is behaves like our first uh, first variation behaves like first derivative in the case of function and uh, for the now here in this case. So, necessary condition if this is satisfied then the sign of then the sign of f of x plus h minus f of x is then equal to uh, sin of f prime f double prime x. So, if f double prime is positive then we have minimum. So, if f double prime x is positive we have minimum if f double prime x is negative then we have maximum because in this case then you should have the the situation like this in the case of maximum the function should be uh, like this at x1 x let's say this is uh, x3 this is x3 so x3 minus like this. x1 x2 or the interval uh, boundary points of the interval and x 3 is an interior point. So, uh, that is what should happen here and uh, so, in the case of um, minimum you should have f double prime at x uh, positive and f double prime at. So, here we should actually have this uh, ok. Let us write it as ok that is ok x 3 x. So, uh, here ok. And so, uh, in this case if f double prime is also 0 then we see that we have to go to higher order derivatives to check the sign of uh, f of uh, x plus h minus f of x. So, in the same manner if for the functional we will have to go to higher order variations uh, in this case. Now, also uh, we have seen that we first solve this f prime equal to 0 and the solution of this equation are uh, the uh, those uh, roots of this equation are the points uh, which are called critical points because uh, the uh, at those interior points only minimum or maximum can occur. And therefore, of course, at the leaving the boundary points because we are taking only in the interior points here. So, same manner we for the functionals if we consider i y equal to x 1 to x 2 f of x y x and y prime x. So, we see that uh, like the points uh, here of uh, this equation the extremals of the equation should be. So, the extremals are or the solutions of Euler's equation which is obtained uh, which is a necessary condition which is a necessary condition condition so that this first variation delta i y equal to 0. So, this 
So, this delta i y equal to 0 we have got that this implies that f y minus d by d x of f y prime equal to 0 that is our Euler's equation. And so, uh, here the solutions the solution of this Euler's equation let us call it I e in short we will call it E e. Are two parameter family of curves given by y equal to y x c 1 c 2. Now, here what we do we uh, assume that this point one of the points let us say is fixed. If these extremals are passing through a given point, given fixed point. then one of the constants the this constant c 1 and c 2 is determined and we get a one parameter family y equal to y x c of extremals. Now, we consider uh, various notions of uh, uh, fields of extremals. So, fields of extremals So, we say that, so if certain uh, domain D uh, like these extremals are occurring like this, and this is domain D or in, in if in a region D the extremals do not intersect then we call this an a proper field so if there is a point where two extremes cross then such a uh, field will not be a proper field so, this is the definition of proper field if uh, in a region D the extremals intersect all the extremals, all the extremals intersect at only one point, then it is called, then it is not a proper field, but it is called a central field. And the point of intersection is called the center 
of the field. Like for example, here it could be like uh, straight lines passing through this point. So, they form of course, this whole region D must be covered by the extremals and so this is a central field. So, for example, the practical example if you take this y equal to let us say for example, y equal to uh, C x. 17.2. So, y equal to c x. So, you have this from this origin all these still lines going. So, any region containing this. So, any region containing the whole this is called a central field. So, this is an example of central field and uh, uh, if you take y equal to c sin x, then we see that here this also when c equal to 0, we get let us say this is 0 0 and here this is 0 pi. So, all these things will be there. So, if we uh, so in that field uh, we should avoid this pi uh, 0 pi. So, any region containing uh, this one. So, like that on the left hand side also you will have uh, this going there. So, any region like this where we avoid this pi and minus pi. Uh, we will have the central field and 0 is going to be its center. But if uh, pi is also included in that, then it is neither a central field nor a proper field. So, here we will have like this 0 less than x less than some uh, number x 2. So, this x 2 must be less than pi. If, if x 2 is greater than pi, then not a central field. So, like this we need uh, the notions of these uh, proper fields and central fields. Now, we consider uh, the family of these extremals uh, like this. So, we have this i y which is x 1 to x 2 f of x y x and y prime x d x. So, we consider here this i y on extremals only. as before we had considered only on the extremals because and this extremal should be an interior extremal like uh, in this case uh, this one it should not be a boundary uh, extremal. Like we have in the case of function uh, the uh, critical points are all those critical points are exterior uh, interior points not the boundary points Bo boundary points minimum and maximum can occur in other ways also. So, uh, we consider that uh, functional on the extremals only and uh, here the point A, we assume that this point A x 1 y 1 uh, is the center of the central field. of 
extremals. That is, we have this picture uh, that the point A, this is x1, y1, and so from here, various extremals are passing, and so this extremal which passes through this point uh, A and B, that is x2, y2 this forms a central field and uh, this extremal that is y x c we will call this given extremal as y x uh, y x equal to. So, this y x equal to y x c 0. So, fixed value uh, given to the constant c to obtain this extremal and when we change the c we get all the different uh, extremals. So, and so we assume that this is a central field and uh, the point A is the center of this field. Now, we need to see that uh, the necessary the sufficient conditions are to be satisfied, uh, we will obtain from this so that the extremal is uh, so that the functional is extremized on this functional and we know whether it is a minimum or maximum value if that sufficient condition is satisfied. Now, we consider here uh, the envelope of uh, this uh, family of extremals. So, here uh, if at all uh, it has an envelope, the envelope of uh, the extremals y equal to y x c is obtained by eliminating c from these two equations that y x c is and equal to 0 and del y by So, eliminating by y sorry this y equal to y x c and this del y by del uh, c at x c this should be 0. So, eliminating c from this uh, the curve we get the uh, envelope like this. So, we have the following situation here uh, this a which is x 1 y 1 and here uh, like this a will also be on uh, because we know that uh, here at a c a is passing through all the extremals. So, that means a uh, x 1 uh, c 0 is the this point and so here we see that del y by del c at x 1, because uh, this since y x c passes passes through a x 1 y 1 for all c that means, uh, this y x 1 c is constant that is y 2 that is equal to y 2 and, uh, and therefore, here we see that del y by del c at x 1 c will be then 0 and so, uh, this a x 1 y 1 is the is on the envelope. Now, other points will be obtained like this you have this extremal which is get getting reflected here like this, because this envelope should go tangentially to these members. So, this is the envelope obtained here in this manner 
and B could be here or B can be uh, on the other side here and the point here uh, this point is called like this is called conjugate point of A. So, C 1 and this will be A star of C 2 and so on. So, uh, the point the point A star C is on an extremal y equal to y x c and on the envelope is called the conjugate point conjugate point of A like this. So, here we see that if we are considering central field, so if the point B is before this uh, arc A to A star, if B is somewhere here, then uh, we can consider the central field in a domain like this. If B is uh, on the other side, if B is somewhere here, uh, then obviously we see that the extremals intersect here uh, and therefore it will not form a central field. So, so if B that is x2 y2 lies on the arc A A star C then we have a central field locally at the center A x 1 y 1 containing the point B that is x 2 y 2. So, here you see that in this case if B is here we can consider this central field like this and this B will be included in that. On the other hand if B x 2 y 2 lies on or rather this if this conjugate point A star C lies on the arc A A star C then the extremals intersect in the neighborhood of uh, B. Hence, we do not have, we do not get a central field. Thus, the sufficient condition for the existence of A central field at A that is x 1 y 1 containing 
b x 2 y 2 is that that b must lie on a a star c on the arc this is called this condition is called the jacobi condition now mathematically uh, this can be seen that it can be seen that since here we get that since y x c satisfies island that is f y which is x y x c y prime x c minus d by d x of f y prime at x y x c y prime x c equal to 0. Differentiating with respect to so, let us say this is 17.4, differentiating 17.4 with respect to C, we get F y y will not write these dependence here f y y and then y prime uh, with respect to c. So, that is del y by del c plus f y y prime del y prime del 2 so, this is with respect to x and so we get another one with respect to c. So, del x del c minus d by d x of here f y prime y and del y by del c plus f y prime y prime del 2 y by del x del c equal to 0. Here we have used the convention uh, that uh, f xi eta is del 2 f over del xi del eta that is first we are differentiating with respect to xi and then eta rather than uh, other way around if it is uh, eta xi usually books might follow in the other way around, but we will follow this convention that f xi eta which is actually equal to del 2 f del xi del eta means we are first differentiating it with respect to xi and then with respect to eta. So, that is del over del eta of del f over del xi. So, that is the convention we are following here in the notation and so uh, let this del y over del c of x c denote be denoted as u, then we get here in this equation f y y u plus f y y prime u x minus d by d x of f y prime y u plus f 
y prime y prime u x. Now, here uh, there is no c derivative appearing since in this in the above equation no c derivative with respect to c is appearing explicitly although it is uh, denoting u it is c derivative appearing there, but not explicitly. So, we have thus v denote this uh, u x as u prime, prime means with respect to uh, x keeping other variables fixed we get uh, we denote which gives finally f y y minus d by d x of f y y prime u minus d by d x of f y prime y prime u prime. So, this is a this is called Jacobi equation this is 17.5 17.5 is called Jacobi's equation. and we solve we solve this we solve 17 point this is second order equation in u we solve this 17.5 for u uh, u clearly u at x1 y1 that is at a is 0 if u uh, is not 0 in the interval x 1 less than x less than x 2 then the Jacobi condition is is satisfied. And so, we need to solve just this equation here. Uh, so, mathematically that whatever was explained here that the uh, extremal that point B should be before uh, this uh, conjugate point of uh, the extremal that conjugate point of A and so we see that u is 0 at A and then subsequently u should not be 0 anywhere in that interval. So, that before uh, this uh, the extremal will not touch the uh, envelope and so that is what we will see in various examples in the next lecture. Thank you very much for uh, paying attention.